Everyone in the career field typically falls into one of two categories. Either you are an exempt employee earning an annual salary, or you are a non-exempt employee earning an hourly wage. But what is exempt versus non-exempt? The Fair Labor and Standards Act, FLSA, classifies employees into either exempt or non-exempt based on their eligibility and requirements as it relates to overtime compensation. If you are an exempt employee and earn an annual salary, then you are exempt from the overtime rules and therefore not eligible to receive overtime pay. If you are a non-exempt employee and earn an hourly wage, then you are not exempt from the overtime rules and are therefore eligible to receive overtime pay. Employees do not determine the exempt versus non-exempt identifier. This distinction is based on the job, your compensation, and how your company is utilizing the job that you're in. There are guidelines and standards that we can look at to see what makes a job exempt versus non-exempt or hourly versus salary. First, there's a salary test. If you earn less than $23,600 a year or $455 a week, then you would be classified as non-exempt or hourly. If you earn more than $648 a week, then it depends on whether you have a guaranteed minimum amount that you earn each week. This can be stated in hours or salary, but there has to be a guarantee. I want to clarify that if you are truly hourly, your manager guaranteeing a certain number of hours each week is not the same thing, and at the end of the day, they can simply choose not to schedule you. Here, we are talking about an actual guarantee where you will make X amount every single week. Additionally, there can be no reductions in pay. Meaning, if for holidays, sick time, or anything similar to these causes you to lose money, then you're in a non-exempt status. An exempt employee out on a sick day, for instance, would still receive the full day's pay. It may just be coded as sick or paid time off. Whereas for a non-exempt employee, if you were to run out of those days, your pay would literally drop as a result of losing hours. The duty test. Based on your job duties, there are a number of different scenarios that can result in an exempt status. Those are executive exemptions, administrative exemption, professional exemption, computer employee exemption, outside sales exemption, and the highly compensated exemption. These various exemptions deal with your leadership of two or more people, working in an office setting, making independent judgments, doing work that requires specialized experience or education, working as a skilled worker within the computer field doing systems work, primarily making sales, obtaining orders or contracts for services and products, and you must be compensated at $107,000 a year or higher. Note, to be exempt, you don't have to check every box related to these six exemption statuses, but you do have to qualify under at least one of them. And for more details on each exemption, review FLSA Fact Sheet number 17A, which can be found by doing a quick Google search.